first uh, first Sunday since COVID started that you've had evening service like this. So no trickle back in, amen. And uh, but what you need to do is you need to go home and call your friends that were here this morning. And say you guys really missed it tonight, man. You was so good, and just make them feel really like they missed something. Not guilty or bad, bad, but but we are glad to be here. Um, I want to introduce Dale and Cindy Bo. Would you just raise your hands like we don't know who you are? Okay. And Miss Cindy is uh, Scotty Drake, Scotty and Barbara Drake's daughter. So she's the daughter of the founder of Help Ministries. Okay. And she brought her husband along with her tonight, which was nice. Appreciate Brother, Brother Dale. He's, he drops everything he's doing to run our guys all over the place. And we, we need a lot of people like him volunteer drivers that makes help ministries go along amen it's like the oil that keeps the parts moving and uh it's a, it's a great blessing but uh, if you have any questions about help ministries please free to ask us feel free to ask us okay and we we are right now in about 70 countries of the world working with about 600 national pastors and we have no clue how many churches are being started there are the thousands, probably tens of thousands that have started since the last 28 years. And I'll just to give you an example, our brother here, uh, Peter from Africa, Kenya, Africa, he started five churches already. He's training eight men. Hopefully they're going to all start eight churches. And hopefully they're going to turn around and, 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 and train about three other men. And uh, he'll tell you his story tomorrow night. He'll, he'll get the floor tomorrow night. So be sure you're back. You don't want to miss Brother Peter. He's got a great testimony of what God's doing in his life. Um, but this this is uh, typical of a lot of our national pastors who have a Bible Institute, or they work in conjunction with somebody else who has a Bible Institute, and they're training nationals. And we, we believe if you're going to reach an entire country with the gospel, that you need to use nationals to do it. And we believe that um, it's the cost effective. Amen? <laughs> And, uh, you know, the corporate world, they, they use the term, get more bang for your buck. Well, that's what Help Ministries does in the spiritual realm with missions. And um, you, you support one of our national pastors, you're really supporting three or four or five more on top of that. Because each of these fellows have said they share, they share their, their offerings that they get and their support with their other pastors that need help starting churches. And so... Um, they use some for their some of the support for their families, but you know, um, as as a pastor knows, and I pastored for many years, your money is not your own a lot of times, and you spend a lot of your own money on church things, don't realize you're doing it, but um, and that's okay because that's what God's called us to do. We're in the ministry, and we, we enjoy doing it. It's, it's, it's a joy to sacrifice for the Lord. So pray for these different uh, men. Is there anybody that was not here? This morning, that, that's here tonight, that was not here this morning, who didn't get a chance to hear Brother Amino. Good, you all heard him, that's good. All right, tonight we're going to hear from Brother Steve Marola. He is um, a new graduate of Landmark Baptist College in Haines City, Florida. Just graduated from there, spent four years there. Before that, though, he was... Um, he was in Kenya and went to college in Kenya and got a degree in in uh, computer science, I think, wasn't it? Something like that. Close enough. <laughs> he knows a lot about computers anyhow. And he taught computers at the college his last year there to the students, other students there. So that was a blessing. So he's our two-go guy. When we, we, when we can't get the internet and something's not coming up right, we can't find it, that's what we're looking for. Brother Steve, come here. He says, oh, here we go again, you know. But uh, it's a blessing to have him around because he knows a lot of stuff. But he's a, he's a great blessing. And, and uh, so he's, his, uh, his, he's raising support right now along with the other fellas, but he's been doing this for a little while. And then we'll continue on through the spring and head back to Kenya probably early summer, May probably, something like that. And uh, so pray, pray for him as he goes over there. He'll tell you his burden in just a moment here. So, Brother Steve, why don't you come and sing a song for us? 
How Great Thou Art in Swahili. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, share your testimony and preach for us. Okay. Bwana Mungu na shanga kabisa Nikitaza makama vilivyo Nyotanguru movitu vingi vyote Viumba vyo kwa uwezo wako Roho yangu Ikuimbie Jinsi wewe Ulevyo mku Roho yangu Na ikuimbie Jinsi wewe Ulevyo mku Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art amen Oh well, uh, it's just been a blessing to be here, and what what a sweet spirit we've, we've had already, and the singing, and uh, all the fellowship, you know, and it's just good to be saved. Amen. And if you're not sure you're saved, let's just do it tonight, Amen. you know. Amen. You can be 100% sure that if you die right now, you're going to get to heaven, yeah. you know, and... I'm sure the pastor will not say, you wasn't saved. No, no, no. You need to get saved. Amen. You know, and uh, if, you're not, if, you're not, if you're not sure yet, I can take my Bible and show you how to get to heaven. Right. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the preacher will not be ashamed of the preacher's wife or anybody who's saved. They will show you how to be 100% sure Amen. that you know, that you know, that you know. You're right. If you die right now, you're going to heaven. Amen. All right. Open your Bible to the book of Mark chapter 14. And I'm Steve Murilla. Steve Murilla and, you know, in America, I think everybody knows Swahili. If you can say Hakuna Matata, that's Swahili. All right. That's Swahili. That's 100% Swahili. Hakuna Matata. That's the language that we speak in Kenya. And, you know, in Kenya, we have 44 different languages, you know, and all this language, you can't understand anything. Like Brother Peter, uh, he's from Kenya. We can talk in Swahili because Swahili is a national language. But when he start talking his dialect, I really have no clue. And when I talk to my parents, he has no clue what I'm saying. You know, 44 different languages, you know, and I was born in a city called Kawangware Slam. It's the suburb of the Nairobi, Nairobi city. And Kawangware is very, very rough, very wickedness there, immorality, and all you can name it. It's all in the slum. You know, here in America, you call it the ghetto, but you can't compare the slum and the ghetto. It's way, way, way different. It's way totally different way of life. People live in very small condition, little sharks, and some people don't even have anything to eat. Some people just don't care, you know? But you know what? They all have a soul. You know, they all have a soul and they all need to get saved. You know, and that's our job. And my dad is part of the health ministries and he's planted over 30 churches. You know, and some people go under the tree and, and have their churches over there. And in 2018, Brother Dale went, uh, went 
um, in Kenya, and he said that's one of the hardest trip that he's been there. You know, and um, he's 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 our driver, and I think he was a firefighter, and he drives like a firefighter. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes he gets in, he gets into that, and he thinks he's in a he's in a truck, and he put the sirens on, and he he's there. You go, let's go, right? You know, but you know, I will never regret serving the Lord. I will never regret being in the ministry and doing what the Lord has for us, you know. And don't stop being faithful. You know, even if the pastor is not seeing you, guess what? God is seeing you. So all that matters is you doing it for the Lord. And you're doing it in a genuine 100% heart. You're just not doing it because you're forced to do it. You know, sometimes we do things just because... People want, want to be shown or people want to be seen. But you know what? God is watching. God is watching. Oh, Raph, that was just uh, an advertisement. But now it's the message time. After two days, if you forgot, is Mark, Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death but they said not on the feast day lest there be an uproar of the people and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper as he sat at meat there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard very precious and she broke the box and poured it on his head and there was some that had indignation within themselves and said where was this waste of ointment made for it would have been sold for more than 300 pence and and have been given to the poor and they murmured against her and jesus said let her alone why trouble ye her she has wrought a good work on me, for ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. Dear Lord, I say thank you for your, for your word tonight. God, you know all the needs that they have in this church. God, I pray for uh, this uh, guy that was mentioned tonight about... He, he, he was involved in a wreck, God, and please just touch our body because you are a great physician. God, please just touch her and touch the give, the give wisdom to all the doctors that are working on him tonight. Please, God, just we come to you begging you, God, please just show yourself mighty. And God, please thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. God, I praise your name, and I say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, God. God, please, as I share your word tonight, just touch me and be let, use me as a vessel, God. I say thank you, and I love you. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. You know, this message here, uh, I can just put up someone tonight. Uh, the topic of the message is, it's not wasted or it's not a waste it's not a waste coming to church here tonight it's not a waste you know sometimes people will say why are you going to church wednesday night why are you going to church monday morning why are you going to church sunday night it's not a waste you know why because we're coming together fellowshipping together giving thanks to the lord you know every time in in our christian life has to be thanksgiving every day because, you know, when God woke you up, you got to say, thank you, Lord. When God gave you his word to read every morning and doing devotion, maybe every night, you got to say, thank you, Lord. For all he's done, we got to say, thank you, Lord. When he sent his son, Jesus Christ, we got to say, thank you, Lord. I don't know how, I don't know your testimony. I don't know how you got saved. But you know what? You came to the knowledge of God. 
and you got saved and you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. It's not a waste coming to church after Thanksgiving night and say, why am I going to church? Sometimes you can be tired. Sometimes you can be maybe weary, having a headache and say, should I even go to church? Maybe you have a show that you're watching. Maybe you have gun smoke that you're watching. You know, maybe you have a Western movie that you are watching. But you know what? It's not a waste you showing up to church tonight because God loves you and God needs you and God wants you to worship him and giving him thanks and say, thank you, Lord, for the singing. Thank you, Lord, for nothing can wash away my sins, but your blood only can wash away my sins. So it's not a waste for you to come here tonight and read your Bible and say, Mark chapter 14, it's not a waste. Coming to the altar here, say, God, I don't know what I'm going through. I don't know why I'm discouraged. I don't know why my family is not saved. Keep on praying. One day they're going to get saved. You know, and being thankful, you know, the opposite of thankfulness is complaining. Complaining. Sometimes we complain because our grass is too green. Or sometimes we complain uh, the neighbor's grass is green, but yours is not green. And sometimes I know I, I say this a lot and brother, uh, brother Tom laughs a lot every time. And sometimes you can go to McDonald's and tell them, I don't need pickle in my burger. But you, they put pickles in your burger and you say, why did they put it there? Just take it out and eat that burger. Don't complain. Sometimes people somewhere don't have anything to eat. Just take that pickle out. Give someone that's going to eat that pickle because brother Tom likes pickles so much. I don't like pickle. So maybe when I say I don't want pickle and then they put there, guess what I'm doing? I don't complain. Sometimes I just say, okay, thank you, Lord. You know, I take it out and I give it to him and he enjoys it. You know, you can be a blessing to somebody by what you give them, you know, and God can use you to be a blessing, right? It's not a waste. Or sometimes you can just say, well, I don't want to have a bad attitude, but I told them not to give me pickles. <laughs> but you know what? They're human beings. Maybe they had bad days. Maybe sometimes they just had a bad day, but you know you got to say, at least they're doing something. At least they didn't put poison in your burger. <laughs> right? But then you know what? We got to say thank you, Lord. Right. It's not giving period. But in a Christian life, Thanksgiving ought to be every single day. Yes, you know, and we're so glad because Jesus came to die on the cross for us. And we got saved. Because what? We got to praise him and say, because of you, I'm saved. Amen. Because of you, this guy from Kenya came to, to preach to us tonight. Because if we were not saved, I'm sure we'll not be here tonight, right? Or maybe if you're not saved, you're here because somebody invited you to come. So it's not a waste. You know, and Spike now, here in verse 4, it's, it, it says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he saw as may, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spine, spike, spike nerd, spike nerd. I hope I'm saying that word correctly. Spike nerd, right? You know, and this spike nerd was very, very expensive ointment. It was all the way from the mountains, the mountains of India, and people were having a very hard time to get that spike nerd ointment. You know, and, and you know, this ointment here is was very precious, it was very expensive, it was very like sometimes you know you put a cologne if you're a lady, you want everybody to to smell and see what kind of cologne is that? You know, and at that point, that period, that spike nerd was very, very, very precious to people. And you know, if you were in the community at that point, they take that spike nerd and they put, maybe if somebody dies, they put it there and they don't want anybody else to use it. They break the bottle and they put it together in the coffin. 
and they do it that way. You know, because it was very precious, because nobody, some people couldn't afford it, but it was this lady here, and it says having an alabaster box, and you know alabaster box is very expensive, and it's very, people put that, anything there that's very, very treasurable, gold, jewels, and all kind of diamonds. They put it very, very safe there, and they keep it there. You know, it was worth something. You know, sometimes when, when we come to church and people say it's wasted, and you know, you're doing it for the Lord. You're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your time coming to church and saying, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. And this lady here and people are wondering, why did she wasting? And, you know, the lady, she knew she's doing something for the Lord. She knew people will talk back to her and people will gossip and naysayers will say bad things to her. But she knew she's doing it for the Lord. What's that one thing in your mind that you can think that people say it's a wasted but when God sees it, he knows that's not a waste. When God sees it, when you pray for that missionary, when you pray for that family member to get saved, when you pray for your friend to get saved, it's not a wasted prayer. Keep on praying. One day they will come to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Keep on praying. Keep on being faithful. Your faithfulness counts. You know, God's word is all the things that we need. And sometimes our prayers are not answered on time, but God's time is the best time. God's timing is the best timing. You know, and I remember when I was 15 years old and and I started playing soccer and I invite kids to come and playing soccer. And after playing soccer, I tell them, no, 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 it's not time to go home yet. You've had fun. Everything was good. Now it's time for you to listen to the gospel. You know, and a lot of kids got saved through that. Anything that we can do to reach out to the community, we can do it. We can do it. Maybe it's passing out trucks. Maybe it's passing out thanks giving box, wrapping it very nicely and say, Jesus loves you. You know, sometimes all, all the time people say, I love you. I love you, mom. I love you, dad. I love you, babe or darling or whatever word you use. You love them. But, you know, human nature, when they do something wrong and they you, you listen and you want to, do I even love you? Do I even love you? You know, because they're just human beings, they can do something wrong. But, you know, the love of God is not wasted. The love of God is the greatest love that we can see that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We didn't pay anything. I didn't pay anything, but you know what I did? I accepted that gift. I said, because he's done so much for me, he died on the cross for me. He shed his blood for me. He went through all and people were mocking him and people were spitting on him. But you know what? He died for me. He is my savior. He is the king of kings. He is a wonderful counselor. He did that because of you and me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We didn't have to do anything. We just said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, and sometimes we say our life is wasted. Our money is wasted. Our gift is wasted. Maybe you can give somebody a gift and Christmas is coming and people will start opening the gift. And in January, you say, I give my grandson that toy. But you find that toy under a tree on the yard and you're wondering, why did I give that gift to them? Why did I even waste my money buying that to them? You know, it's not wasted because you gave them happiness. And you gave them something that they treasure that point and they see that say, Nana gave this to me, Papa gave this to me, Mom gave me this to me. And that point they were so happy. And you wondering, they were happy at that point. But the other one, they wasted that toy. And you're wondering, why are you not using the toy that I gave you? 
Sometimes we do that to God. We don't give him the praises that he deserves. We just give him the praises when we need something. But after we got that thing, we forget about him. We forget about him and say, God, it's okay. But when we need him, we come to him and we give him all his names and all that. And and we say, God, I need you to give me this. And you know what? God is always faithful, even when we are not faithful. He still loves us. He still says, I still need you. He still gives us that comfort, the Holy Spirit, and to comfort us and to say, I still, are you still my child? I'm not going to let you go. You're still my child. First thing, you have something. You have something that is valuable to God and probably valuable to you also. Your testimony. You know, you can give somebody your testimony and they get saved. Or you can give somebody your testimony and you say, did you go through that? Did you go through that? Maybe God took you away from alcohol. Maybe you were doing something that was not godly, but God saved you. And when you tell that somebody that is going through the same thing and they got saved, it's not wasted. It's not wasted. Your testimony is very unique. You know, verse 7, verse 5, it says, For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. You know, these people were just thinking about the money. And they knew that ointment is very, very expensive. They knew that alabaster box, maybe by caught something. And they were just thinking about money, money, money. And you know, sometimes people, you will, uh, will invite them to church and they will say, you know, every time you invite me to church and I come to church, everything is just money, money, money. And they say, I'm not going to go to church because everything I hear is money, money, money. You know, we need to pay the light bill. We need to pay the air bill. But the thing is, at Walmart, everything they ask is money, money, money. (laughs) Black Friday was just Friday. Everything they ask is money, money, money. You say, buy one, get one free. It's not free. They got you when you bought it. You paid something there. The only thing that is free is receiving Jesus Christ as your personal savior. That's the free gift that you can get. You know, money, money, money. Money is good. Missionaries need money to do work. They need something. They need things to go on. When you go to the gas station, you can put gas for free. You got to pay something. You know, your prayers is not wasted. Giving to mission is not wasted. When you're praying for your family member, it's not wasted. When you say, God, I need something to do, come to the altar. God will pray, will will give you something to do, and you know what? It's not going to get wasted. That prayer that you pray in your closet and you're wondering, God, when am I going to get the answer? Keep on praying. God's timing is the best timing. You know, and I remember when I was 11 years old, I, I was born in a Christian family. Dad is a pastor, mom is a teacher. And I thought just because dad is a pastor, I got everything right. I thought just because mom is a teacher and she teaches me and she shows me everything and the verses, memorizing verses and all that and and everything was just good. But I remember when I went to a camp and the preacher preached about heaven and hell. And I said, I, I've never done that. Come Monday night, everything was okay. I said, I I already memorized those verses. I know them. And Tuesday night, everything was good. You know, camp is just playing and fun and competing with other people. And everything was all right. Wednesday night, I started remembering everything that the preacher was talking about. And I said, I need to do something. And that day, it was just playing and competing, different time, and Thursday night, Thursday came, and everything was all right. Thursday morning, I ate breakfast, ate lunch, but, but I wasn't just the same. I started shaking, and I couldn't wait for services to come. I couldn't wait. I was just every time, are we, are we, can we have it earlier today? Can we just have it earlier? And I started 
wondering what's going to happen. And I remember night came Thursday night and I was sitting on the third pew and I was shaking so bad and I was crying and the preacher was preaching and immediately after the preaching, I came to the altar and received Jesus Christ as my personal Amen. savior when I was at the camp. And that day, I can't forget that night. And the good thing is, I can't lose it. I'm still till the day of redemption. Nobody can snatch it away from me. You know, sometimes people will give you a gift and say, this pen is for you. And they will give it, they will wrap it around and they will give it, you know, but human beings, sometimes they say, this pen is very nice. I need it back. You know, but the gift of God, nobody, the gift of salvation, nobody can snatch it away from you. Nobody can snatch it away from you. You know, you must learn to break the box, giving it all to Jesus. Sometimes God says, I need you. I need you to give all your troubles. I need you to give all your fears. But you know, sometimes as human beings, we, we are fearful and wondering, God, am I, am I, will I be able to give you all my money? Will I be able to give you all my righteousness and all that? But the thing is, God needs everything from you. Just give it all to God. And you know, once you give it all to God, he's going to start blessing you, blessing after blessing. They come, they come, they come. Just give it all to God. And just stay faithful and be focused on the word of God. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You know, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. You know, every day with Jesus, you know, it's not wasted. Praising God, shouting to God, and when maybe you're in Walmart and you've seen something and you say, praise the Lord, hallelujah. It's not wasted. Your praise is not wasted. And you know, sometimes we can praise the Lord even when we're just in our car and say, God, you're so good, there's no traffic today. God, you're so good. The roads are very clear. I can see at night. Maybe I didn't hit a deer when I was driving. Thank you, Lord. You got to praise him. You got to give him what he deserves. You know, he, he needs all our praises. He needs all our praises. You know, you will never regret giving all to God. You will never regret giving all to God. He's our God. He's our true God. And, and you know, these people in verse 6, and Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrong a good work on me. Jesus told them, hey, don't, don't, be, don't be naysayers. You're not better than her. You're not better than her. She did what she can. She broke the box because of me. It's very precious. It's very expensive. It's very, very, very precious. People need it, but let her alone. You know, we have people every time they say something to you and they back talk you. But you know, God tells them, let him alone. He's doing my job. Let him alone. He's being faithful to his church. Let him alone. She's going to church, but you're not. No, all we can do is praise God. You know, God will never forget giving you your all to him. Verse 9 says, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this is also that he, that she hath done shall be spoken for or for a memorial of her. You know, the gospel. This is good news. You know, in Kenya we have this community. All they do, they drink cow blood. Yeah, it's nasty, right? Yeah. That's what they do. They drink cow blood and they do all the ritual things and they think the cow blood is going to take them to heaven. That's their religious practice. You know, in the same community, they take that blood and they mix it with other things. They smear it on their head and the flies start coming. You know, the flies start coming and stinky. And, you know, they think the flies are blessings. 
That's what they think. They think the flies are blessings. But you know what? We're not doing that. We know that the only blood that we need to know is with Jesus Christ. And we just sung a song about nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, and communities after communities doing ritual stuff. This one community wakes up every three o'clock in the morning. They put a fire. And they start rounding in the fire and dancing and doing all kind of ritual stuff. They do all ritual stuff. And they, they, they tell each other dreams after dreams after dreams. And they think that's one way of going to heaven. Are you so glad you didn't have to do that? Are you so glad you didn't have to drink cow blood to get to heaven? You know, God sent his son to pay that price for us. We're so glad we can come here tonight and in this beautiful sanctuary, praising God and some people somewhere. Brother Dale can take you there. They're worshiping under a tree. You know, maybe if I say, you can say, do they really do it? Brother Dale went there. They start worshiping under a tree. And then after that, build them a church so that they can come together. Even when it's rainy, they come to church. Let's not even go far. Peter's first church. Peter's first church. Under a tree. Under a tree. But we're here tonight. We can't be thankful. We're here tonight when it's too hot outside. We are whining and complaining. It's okay. You know why? Because we are blessed. God has given us so much, we forget about giving him thanks. God has given us so much and we, we, are, we are wondering why is it everything done? Why is everything doing all this? Hey, give thanks to the Lord. Praise him. Worship him. Do all you can do because He's done so much to you. Don't be a complainer and say, why, why, why? Just say, how can I do it? You can pray, how can I do it? You can give, how can I do it? You can be faithful to church, how can I do it? You can give praises to God. And all your praises, all your prayers, everything, it's not wasted. It's not a waste. It's not a waste. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world. It didn't say just in Jerusalem. It didn't say just in Kenya. It didn't say just in America. The whole world. That's why we got missions. Our plan is to go where you can't go. If you can't go to a foreign field, you can pray for missionaries in foreign field. If you can't go to a foreign field, you can say, God, I'm just being so faithful to pray. And you take our, our, our prayer card and put it in the fridge. And every time you're going to grab cheese, midnight snack. You say, God, I'm grabbing a midnight snack, but I'm praying for these missionaries where they are. Amen. And God will hear your prayers because he's so faithful to answer our prayers. And he's so faithful. All we can do is rejoice and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Verily, verily, I say. Let's share the gospel. This also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. When you die, what will people say about you? Will people say he was a faithful member of the church? Will people say he just wasted his life? Will people say he didn't waste his life? It was not wasted. It's not wasted. 
let's be excited for the Lord and say, God, even if I'm a complainer, I want to change it. Guess where you got to do? Go to the altar. Go to your prayer closet and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me. And, you know, we have this intermittent cough. That cough that you, you just, you didn't, want, you didn't mean to cough, but you just coughed. Like, <clears throat> maybe something was, you're, you're just swallowing something and you coughed something. You know, and our prayers sometimes, our thanksgiving, she'll be like, <clears throat> thank you, Lord. You didn't mean to do it, but you say, God, thank you. That thing that you're doing, it's not wasted. It's not wasted. Let's keep on praising God. Let's keep on being faithful. Let's on. Let's keep on going. It's not wasted. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the message, brother. I was thinking what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not wasted. It's not wasted. Let's all stand our feet. The Lord spoke to your heart tonight.